Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, the amendment before us today makes me so sad that I had a hard time figuring out what to say. We have been in session since January, and during that time we could have committed ourselves to fixing the Medicaid mess. We could have worked on a serious plan to help people who can't go to the doctor because of high deductible plans. And instead of expanding health care, you're taking it away from people. Not only that, you're using a budget bill to go into our civil rights code that we should be proud of to make people's lives worse based on animus or, if I'm being gen generous, misunderstanding. With this amendment, the majority party prioritizes hurting a small, vulnerable minority for political gain. Transgender Iowans are your neighbors, your doctors, lawyers, teachers. They might be your kids, grandkids, nieces or nephews. They are veterans who have served our country. And most of all, they are human beings who want to live their lives here in Iowa just like you and me. If you believe that gender-affirming surgery is just cosmetic, you are not listening to the many transgender Iowans who have spoken out publicly about this treatment. According to the American Medical Student Association, 65% of trans people have experienced discrimination in public accommodations over the past two years. 19% are survivors, or 19% of survivors of hate violence are transgender. And because of fear of discrimination, one in five transgender people have delayed medical treatment within the past year. And sadly, this amendment actually writes healthcare discrimination right into our state code. Voting for this bill is kicking people who are already down. It should be noted that this amendment also targets intersex Iowans. The archaic term used in the bill is hermaphrodite or hermaphrodism, but we're really talking about intersex people. If you are not familiar with this term, um, I really do recommend that you go to the internet and do a little bit of research because about as many people as have red hair have an intersex condition. I can't understand why you would support an amendment that would possibly deny medical treatment, for example, to a boy born with a hypospadia. This is a condition where the urethra doesn't quite develop at the end of the penis as typically happens. It may be on the side or it may not form a hole, might be kind of off or a split. I can't understand why you would potentially bar a person born with one of the many intersex hormone related issues, such as the one that makes a boy develop breasts at puberty. So let's be clear that with this bill, a boy who developed breasts as puberty because of hormonal issues might not be able to have surgery to have those removed if is necessary. I want you to think about what that would have felt like for you when you were growing up. Sometimes intersex conditions appear as a person with testicles but no penis, partially formed penis and vagina, female external genitalia with undescended testicles, etc. And I guess some people might call this type of surgery cosmetic, and I guess technically it is, but whether I like it or not, fitting into a defined physical sex is important to many people, and not fitting in has many social and emotional costs in today's world. Why would you use this bill to put up barriers to health care for these folks? I would like to give you all the benefit of the doubt today and think that if you just understood, you would not vote for such a harmful amendment. So I want you to understand that professional medical associations oppose discrimination in healthcare for trans people and advocate for gender affirming services, including surgeries. I want you to hear the testimony of doctors who care for trans people, and I want the voices of transgender Iowans to be heard in this room today. Gender affirming surgeries are not simply cosmetic, they save lives. So first, I think it's important for you to know that the American Medi Medical Association, the American Psychiatric Association, the American Psychological Association, the American Academy of Pediatrics, 
the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the American Public Health Association, the Endocrine Society, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, all support supportive gender treatment, which sometimes includes surgery. It's also important for you to know that people don't just decide one day to get surgery. The road to having a gender-affirming surgery is often a long one for people, one wherein they go through a lot of soul-searching, um, counseling, treatment, etc., and ultimately transitioning and having a gender-affirming surgery is the right step for them. Like I said earlier, transgender people are people we all know, they're veterans. Um, in fact, it's estimated that the United States military is the biggest employer of trans people, little known fact. So here's a story from a transgender island, Iowan, Jack Schuler, who's a United States Marine Corps veteran and I believe currently serves in the Army Reserve. Here's what Jack has to say. I underwent gender reassignment surgery on April 10th of this year. I was born on July 13, 35 years ago, but April 10th is the day I became myself. For years, I existed in denial and depression, forcing myself to be a person that I was not. I lived with a body that matched neither my heart nor mind. I saw in the mirror a reflection that seemed to belong to somebody else. It distressed and anguished me. When I finally admitted to myself the truth I'd always known inside that I was transgender, I finally began to truly live. When I was three, I told my mom that I wanted to be a boy, but I was conditioned to believe that that would never be possible. When I freed myself from those notions and admitted who I was, I began to live as the man that I am, and it made me feel more whole. I didn't feel like a liar anymore. Still, there was something missing that mirror reflection still showed someone else. Looking down after a shower didn't look like me. It looked like a cruel joke. That I'm a veteran, I'm a poet, I'm a man, I'm a son and brother, I'm an artist. All of these statements give me great power and confidence just as the daily affirmations you make for yourselves to give you the drive to face the challenges of the day. As wonderful as those statements are, there was one single event that amplified their power and gave me a jolt of life unlike anything I've ever felt. On April 10th, the recovery nurse woke me after surgery. I lifted my head and touched my bandages, and through a mixture of laughter and tears, I know that my mirror reflection would finally be my own. When the bandages came off five days later and the drains came out, I saw myself as myself for the first time. In the Marines, we used to say that pain is weakness leaving the body. My chest is sore, my movements limited, and my wounds weep. With every pang and seep, I lose depression, anxiety, self-loathing, and shame. I gain only confidence and love for myself, a man, a human, a child of God. I want to live. I want to wake up tomorrow. I want to make the absolute most of my years on this earth. And that is a feeling I did not know until I looked in the mirror and saw the man that I am. I believe my time is running short, but I wish I had so much more time because I have so many more stories of regular Iowans, people you might see at the grocery store or the coffee shop, even somebody you might see at your local co-op, somebody driving a tractor down the road because transgender people are everywhere. Um, but I know that I need to close soon. One thing I do want to bring to the attention of the body, if the human aspect is not enough to influence you to vote against this cruel, targeted, discriminatory bill, I want you to think about what this looks like for our state. 